we're going to begin in just one minute. I will call today's regular board order. Please uh, provide notice, Ms. Jones. Directors of the of the city of PA will regular session Wednesday, April 4, in the auditorium at East Middle School, 1001 Atkins Street, at 6 o'clock p.m. by request of the president, Dr. J. Brenneman. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Roll call, please. Mr. Harkins. Here. Mr. Nichols? Here. Mr. Sharif? Excused. Thank you. Ms. Here. Ms. Cooley? Here. Ms. Devlin? Here. Ms. Here. Ms. Graff? Ms. Graff, can you hear us? Mr. Brenneman? Here. Uh, and, and Ms. Graff, if she rejoins, she'll be part of our meeting if we are able to connect. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have our uh, Pledge of Allegiance led by Jenna Phillips, sixth grade student from the Patrick J. DePaulo Student Success Center at Emerson Gridley, introduced by Ms. Jill Crable, principal, followed by a moment of silence for Neil Christensen, retired custodian who passed away on March 15th, Antoinette Fabrizio Jakubowski, retired secretary who passed away on March 23rd, and Dennis Carley, former district police officer who passed away on March 28th. Ms. Crable. Good evening, Erie Public School Superintendents, board members, and community members. I have this dis distinct privilege of introducing our pledge leader for today's board meeting. Jenna Phillips is a sixth grade student who has attended Erie Cyber Choice Academy since 2022. She encompasses our values of being respectful, responsible, and resilient on a daily basis. Jenna is our student representative for our middle school program, representing the middle school on our positive behavior support team. She's always kind and compassionate to everyone in the building. She has great attendance. She completes her schoolwork with resilience. And currently, she has all A's. Jenna is here today with her mother, Sarah Phillips. Jenna also has three siblings that attend the Erie Cyber Choice Academy, Tiger, grade 7, Carter, grade 4, and Evelyn, who's in kindergarten. She has a love of math. Hello, Kitty. And Taylor Swift. I'm not sure that's the correct give you Jenna Phillips. Please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty. Thank you, Jenna. Can you come up here a moment? We've got something for you. to announce that the board met in executive session on Wednesday, April 3rd in conference room one at the administrative building, 148 West 21st Street from 6.39 p.m. to 7.35 p.m. regarding legal and personnel matters. Next on our agenda, and just so folks know that uh, a lot of the items on our agendas, they have some require different kinds of votes. Um, they are available online on our website if you'd like to follow along, also on the screens uh, before you as well. Uh, next, we have the report of the secretary and approval of the meeting minutes. Do I have a motion to approve that? I move. So moved. <laughs> moved by Ms. Devlin and seconded by Mr. Harkins. 
Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Harkins? Yes. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Amitangelo? Yes. Ms. Cooley? Yes. Ms. Devlin? Yes. Ms. Gillespie? Yes. Ms. Graff? Yes. Mr. Brenneman? Yes. Moving on, we have item three, report of the superintendent, Mr. Polito. Thank you, Dr. Brenneman. Good evening, everyone. During the months of April and May, Erie's Public Schools will administer the 2024 Pennsylvania System of School Assessment, or PASA exam, to students in grades three through eight, and the Keystone exams to students taking Algebra I, Literature, and Biology in high school. PSSA science assessments involve grades four and eight. You can find complete information, including a parent letter, testing schedules, and answers to frequently asked questions on our website. Should you have any questions or concerns, please counselor. Second, a couple of messages for our high school seniors and their families. Erie's Public Schools recently launched our Scholarship Hub, a website dedicated to collecting scholarship opportunities that can help students fund many different types of post-secondary education. This is not exhaustive, but is updated as we become aware of scholarships. So please check it often. You can ac access the hub through your school's website or directly at eriesd.org backslash scholarships. Also, please mark your calendars for April 30th when the Pennsylvania Higher Education Assistance Agency will offer one-on-one -on -one help filling out the federal application for free student aid or FAFSA form. Complete information can be found on our Finally, registrations for uh, pre-kindergarten and kindergarten for the 2024-25 school year opens on April 15th. Families are encouraged to register online. Please visit eriesd.org backslash registration where, where you'll find information about required documentation, immunizations, and a link to the online registration portal. Then uh, tonight with a note recognizing April as National Child Abuse Prevention Month. As educators, we have a special obligation not, not only to educate, but to protect our children. That is the duty we hold above all others here at Erie's Public Schools. And I want to thank all of our staff members who undertake that responsibility each and every day. April is also School Library Month. Thank you to our librarians and library staff for the work they do to foster our students' love of reading and expanding their worlds. And now I'd like to have Ms. Crable come back up again to introduce this month's Student Spotlight students. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am not Joe Crable. Dr. That's, that's okay. A uh, little bit of an audible. Um, so we are thrilled tonight to represent the DePaulo Center and Emerson Gridley for the Student Spotlight. Um, some of you may or may not know is uh, part of what we do is offer some in-person opportunities for our students, and we are going to show a little bit of students tonight. Uh, tonight, our presentation is a little bit of collaboration with our, two of our high school students. Entrell Thomas will be performing an original work of spoken word. It, it's his own words, a motivational piece. He will be accompanied by uh, one of our other high school students, Tyler Wozniki. And after that, Tyler uh, will be performing a short um, sampling of, uh, with Mr. Adair's assistance, who is our music teacher, uh, from a little group you may have heard of named Van Halen, uh, with a little uh, ain't talking about love. So Tyler and Entrell and Mr. Adair.
Langston Hughes says to hold fast to dreams. For if dreams die, life is a broken bird that cannot fly. In the short time that I have lived, I have seen dreams corroded by the very trials that are set in place by faith to help us rise. Though I have also seen dreams filled with the breath of life after being manifested and nurtured through time. It was Anatole France who was quoted saying, to accomplish great things, we must not only act, but also dream. Not only plan, but also believe. Belief is not something that comes easy, but with determination. Someone who is destined for greatness must also be determined to achieve the very things that the beautiful tapestry that is faith has set in place and has us destined to weave. Sacrifice, patience, and endurance are all key ingredients in success. With sacrifice comes patience, with patience comes wisdom, and with wisdom comes prosperity. In the same way, exercise of the body brings physical strength and physical prowess. Exercise of the mind brings a strong understanding of the laws of the universe that we live in. And as vast as the universe that we operate in is, it is the dreams that become the nourishment of the seeds of prosperity that we plant that are so much bigger and stronger than the matter that makes us. And they also hold the power to outlive us inspiring those who come long after we are gone. You are more than the ideas and the neurons that are firing in your brain. Your dreams are bigger and stronger than the restrictions and obstacles you may have encountered, as long as you believe it to be true. I leave you with the question, what will you do? Distant memories of a withered rose reminiscent of its beauty? or the flowers that went on to create a garden of prosperity and an undeniable fragrance of success. The choice is yours. Thank you.
Thank you, Entrell and Tyler. Uh, if you two please would uh, uh, come here before me, I've got a couple of things that we'd like to present you with as well. Next, we're going to uh, recognize this month's stair climbers. So, if Mr. Nixon can come up and get us started. Thank you, Mr. Polito. Stick to it of Stair Climber Award <clears throat> is our district student award. One student from each school is nominated each month during the school year to be recognized for their tenacity, ambition, fortitude, grit, and perseverance towards making improvements in their A, B, Cs, attendance, behavior, and classroom performance. As part of the award, first, I would like to honor the families who have attended with us tonight to honor their child, grandchild, or family member. Please join me in an applause. Special thanks to Mr. Biter and, and his, <clears throat> excuse me, Erie High Pre-Engineering Lab and, and STEM elective students for preparing the plaques for this evening. Also, Orlando of Erie High School for assisting with the for this evening. Round of applause as well. <clears throat> Quick, get started. Go over this a little uh, in the cafeteria of the students. As I say, your name. We'll do a fist bump. We'll step over to Mr. Orlando, receive go up to you'll all of our students and our school board members. Uh, then you'll be, come back down the steps and we'll sit over in this second row. We'll have all of our stair, stair climber winners sit in the second row. Um, every stair climber has been announced. We, we ask that everybody come back up. We'll do it all, and then we'll exit out all together to do individual school and family photos in the lobby. At that point, for the duration of the more than one leave. So with that said, let's get right to our Stair Climber Award. For our first school, student success has made tremendous progress this year. His positive attitude and smile are contagious. Santana is willing to ask for help. He is resilient when things get tough. Santana is respectful to his classmates and teachers. He is a gentleman and encourage others to do their best. Way to go, Santana. Your Emerson Gridley family is very proud of you. So tonight we honor first grader Santana Hollingsworth. From Erie High School, 11th grader, Ronald has a wonderful school year. Excuse me, Ronald has had a wonderful school year. He is always positive when you see him. His grades, attendance, behavior have continually improved over his time with us. Ronald is a model student. He is respectful, responsible, and resilient. We are very proud of Ronald. So tonight we honor 11th grader, Ronald Gillespie. From Collegiate Academy, Tay Ajanik defies our expectations. She is enrolled at Collegiate Academy where she can focus on her core classes every morning. She is at the Erie High School as a career and tech student in the medical assistant program. Tay, as she likes to be called, earned a 3.5 GPA in the first semester and her grades are increasing this quarter. Not only is she successful in her academics, but Tay plays both volleyball number 13 outside hitter, and girls basketball number 13 point guard for the Royals. In fact, this season she played both J junior varsity basketball and was slotted a spot to play 
a varsity going to the district playoffs with the team. Tay Ajanique to improve herself to achieving her goals. She demonstrates self-pride, school pride, respect, honor, resiliency, and responsibility, modeling the character traits we hope for all who attend Erie's public schools. So tonight we honor ninth grader Tay Ajanique Lockett. From East Middle School, Muhammad has made tremendous progress in our classroom. Muhammad came new to East Middle at the beginning of the year and attended our ELL program. That's our English Language Learner program. Once moving to his current classroom, he was able to quickly learn how to use a communication device to communicate his wants and needs. He is a fast, motivated learner who is always trying to be helpful to his classmates and teachers. So tonight we honor sixth grader Mohammed Shiko. So we will make sure to honor his plaque and he'll get his proper last name on there. So thank you for speaking up, teacher and family. Appreciate that. Um, from Strong Vincent, eighth grader. <clears throat> when talking with our stair climbers teachers this month, they both teared up at the thought of him leaving Strong Vincent in June. According to them, this young man is absolute perfection. Kind, hardworking, respectful. He's won just about every award we can give at Strong Vincent and it's fitting he ends his middle school career by being named our stair climber. Erie High Royals, you're blessed to have the Colonel joining your ranks in the fall. Let's give it up for Jalen, JJ Mook Medina, with courage he conquers. And I was made aware that JJ was a, unable to be here. Uh, we always honor our students by reading off their rationale, but we, and we will make sure they get their photo at the school. So we just wanna make sure we still give them proper recognition. From Wilson, Jason Bolerin has shown great progress academically. His motivation for success has increased his participation, engagement, and drive to help his peers. He is always willing to lend a helping hand to those in need. Our team is eager to see continued progress as Jason strives to achieve. So tonight we honor sixth grader Jason Bullerin. From Grover Cleveland Elementary School. Ashish has grown so much during his time at Grover Cleveland. This August, Ashish started a brand new school in a brand new state. I'm sure this was a difficult transition, but he has been such a rock star through it all. At the beginning of the year, Ashish was very quiet and reserved. He didn't participate much in class and struggled in both reading and math. Throughout the school year, he has grown and shown so much improvement. He has moved up in his reading level and has earned 100% on the last three math assessments. His hard work and determination does not go unnoticed. He never hesitates to ask for help when he needs it and has put all of his energy into earning good grades. Additionally, Ashish also earned the Cool Cougar Award for always being respectful, responsible, and safe. As his teacher, I am so proud of how far he has come and I love seeing the smile on his face as his confidence continues to grow in his academics. Ashish, never stop reaching for the stars. Your future is bright. So tonight we honor fourth grader Ashish Kadka. <laughs> J. 
Joanna Connell, first grader. David comes to school each day on time and is ready to learn. He demonstrates that he is responsible by always having his homework completed, follows all school rules, and has great behavior. Even though he has only been in school for a couple months, he is a sponge and is learning new concepts quickly and is evident in the growth he is making. He consistently gives 110% in everything he does. We are so proud of you, David. Tonight we honor first grader David Vactor. From Deal Elementary School. Jamie Arrington is a first grader at Deal Elementary School. He started the year as an eager learner and has grown so much since September. He actively participates in class and demonstrates responsibility as he comes to school ready to learn. He has been a leader in the class, showing respect and kindness to his classmates and teachers. Jamie has demonstrated growth in managing his feelings and makes responsible decisions to be the he can be. He has growth in his benchmark and his diagnostic. Academic successes are the result of his hard work and determination. He continues to score every day and makes his deal very proud. We honor first grader Jamie Arrington. from Edison Elementary School. It has been said, the greatest glory lies not in never failing, but in rising every time you, fa you fall. Tajaya is an ex amazing example of rising to greater heights each and every time there is an opportunity for growth. Tajaya is a bright young star and is delightful to be around. She works hard each day to manage her choices and keeps a positive attitude. We are fortunate to be greeted by her smiling face each day. So tonight we honor first grader Tajaya McInnes. From Harding Elementary School, we are so proud of Mariano Dominic. Mariano came here with severe separation anxiety. He cried all day long to the point of being sick. He would never complete assignments and he never played with friends. Mariano also missed a lot of days of school because of this. Now, Mariano comes to school every day and he is doing very well. He is one of the top students in math and he loves being here. So tonight we honor first grader Mariano Dominic. From Jefferson Elementary School, Lily attended Erie Rise last year and struggled adjusting to the academics at Jefferson at the beginning of the year. She has since learned, however, how to be a responsible student and focus on her work. She tries her best to pay attention and it is showing in her reading and math work. In math, she is excelling and her reading is progressing very well. I am so proud of her for working hard in school. Keep it up, Lily. Tonight we honor second grader Liliana Lily Lipinski. <laughs> Lincoln Elementary School. We are proud of the effort that Cheyenne is giving and the progress that she is making. Earlier in the year, Cheyenne was struggling in her attendance and academics. Cheyenne has now had perfect attendance for an entire month. She is always working very hard academically and recently scored 100% on a spelling test. We are so proud of Cheyenne and know she will continue to grow and meet her goals as a Lincoln Lion. Tonight we honor first grader Cheyenne Carr.
McKinley Elementary School. She has done nothing but improve throughout fifth grade. She has been willing to talk things out when drama was surrounding her, has been willing to walk away from challenging students. Jordiana is very supportive of her friends. She also made great improvements in her academics. She continues to improve her reading scores and has worked really hard at her math skills at school and at home. Jordiana has demonstrated how hard work practice leads to success. Congratulations, Jordiana. Tonight we honor her, Jordiana Errata. From Perry Elementary School, fourth grader. Our Perry stair climber student is Mr. Durfrey Wells. He has shown such progress since the beginning of the year meeting him. He is a sweet, fun, and energetic student who, is, who used to have behavioral concerns throughout the school day. He has now reduced his instances of behaviors considerably. He used to shut down and have some issues and concerns when it was time to do schoolwork, schoolwork and would even get really frustrated. Since joining his classroom, he has also been completing a bulk of his work and is able to showcase his reading comprehension skills and amazing math skills. He is the first student to, to ask to do math work every day. Durfee enjoys being the teacher's helper, line leader, and getting to show off his athletic abilities. He has shown tremendous growth behaviorally, which in turn is helping him academically. His parents have been very supportive, and his teacher explains, it has been a pleasure to have Durfee in my classroom so far this year and to be able to work with him and his family. So tonight we honor fourth grader Durfee Wells. From Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer Burley. Odai's behavior has taken a 180 degree turn. Over the last couple months, he has made substantial improvement. He had a light bulb moment as he comes to school every day with a positive attitude. His behavior falls in line with our school expectation of be respectful, be responsible, and be safe. He is a model for other students. His love for math shows as he is a math whiz and very helpful in translating those tough math questions for many of our newer Arabic speaking students. He has made such growth. I am extremely proud of him. He embodies the Pfeiffer Burley teamwork mentality that makes our unique blend of students and staff such a wonderful place to learn. So tonight we honor second grader Odai Alkalaf.
We'll give just a moment for folks who are uh, leaving the room to go celebrate with their stair climber, and we will uh, get right back to business here in just a minute. And we're going to jump out of order a little bit tonight, too. And so I'd like to have Ms. Mills come up so we can do uh, recognition, of, recognition of this um, winter scholar athletes. OK. Um, members of the school board, Mr. Plato, Ms. Umagella, Mr. Brockman, um, thank you for allowing Mr. Easterling and I to give a winter sports wrap up. We're going to do that first, and then we'll go into scholar athletes. So we'll start with girls bowling. Um, they switched locations this year from Rolling Meadows to Eastland Lanes. Um, that was from all the coaches. That's where they decided to go. Um, Coach Jr. is um, the head for bowling. And from the season, performances of the team, um, they had six scholar athletes. They have eight members of the team, and they all um, attend Collegiate Academy. And those are lists of scholar athletes from bowling. Um, next up is boys basketball. Um, their varsity record was 16 and 7. In region, they were 10 and 2. Um, the varsity head coach is Tom Koval. The JV head coach is Malik Brinson. And the freshman coach is Alex Yurkin. Um, coach Koval's highlight from this season was uh, Region 7 is a very, very competitive region. Um, after uh, beating Cathedral Prep twice and beating a McDowell and the Meadville team, um, they were able to clinch the region championship, which um, is a pretty big title. Um, it was a goal from the senior group to do that, and they were able to accomplish that, which was pretty good. Varsity makeup is 13 uh, members of that team. JV is 10, and freshman is 12. The breakup of schools is listed there, and they had uh, four scholar athletes. If you were able to watch any of the boys' basketball team play this season, um, they were fun to watch. They had 10 seniors. They had played together for a long time, um, going through from some of them from middle school all the way up. So to see them finish um, their senior year together was great. Um, and like I said, Region 7 is, is probably the toughest one out there. Their season didn't end as well as they'd hoped by not um, winning that District 10 title. I really feel if you look through the competition, they would have went way farther down in, um, in states. Their scholar athletes are listed there. And then um, for the East-West All-Star team, they had three members. They just played this past Friday. It was Jaheim Mims, Le'Veon Gore, and Jamarius Johnson. Okay, and our girls basketball, um, their overall record was 18 and eight. Their region record was eight and four, and they are our District 10 champions. Uh, coach Brown is the head varsity coach, and Amy Grande is the JV head coach. Uh, Coach Brown's highlight of the season was, of course, becoming that District 10 champion and defeating Alderdice to make the PIAA playoffs. They have 19 total members of the team. Their team breakup is there, and they had nine scholar athletes. Their scholar athletes are listed there. And for the East-West All-Star team, um, they had four members uh, make that team, Kaija Green, Bella Wiley, Ariana Reap, and my lady, Rivera Rosario. The girls' basketball team has a lot of talent. Um, they had a player of the week, Andrea Nevins. They have four seniors, and we're looking forward to next season. I think they'll have even better season next year. And they deserve that recognition to win that title there. Turn my page here. We're on to swimming. Swimming again, we had swim at East Pool, since our Erie High Pool isn't completed at this time. With that, they still had 15 people on that team. Their overall record for girls was 1-10, and, and boys was 4-7. and seven. Um, The highlight from that from Coach Roberts and Coach Wilmoth, who are the head coaches, was many of those swimmers on the boys' team. To see them have four wins is pretty amazing, because many of their 
swimmers in the beginning couldn't even swim. They had to wear floats. So to see them compete in a, in a match where they did a 50 or meet, and then they did 100, I mean, I was teary-eyed watching it. It was pretty impressive um, to see them do that. We had our um, first ever diver, Alex Gabbard. He won the D10 title, and he competed at um, PIAA States. And Ellie Wirtz competed at the, or she was a D10 champ, and she completed at States in the 500-yard freestyle. Of those 15 members, 12 of the swim team are scholar athletes. And they are listed there. Um, to give some accolades to our two state um, champion or two state uh, people who got to go. Um, Ellie Wirtz, like I said, she was a D10 AAA champion in the 500 freestyle. She had a time of 5 minutes 24 seconds and she dropped 27.21 seconds. If you know anything about swimming, that's a huge time drop. I know Ellie is in this audience, so I think she should stand up and take a round of applause because that was pretty amazing. Um, Alex Gabbard, he was our D10 AAA champion in diving. He had a score of 419.50. Um, he competed at PIAA State Meet, and he took 19th overall. Uh, he would have medaled, I think, if he was a little nervous in his first couple dives. If you know anything about diving, you got to do really well in the first um, part of your dives to keep going on. Um, but any swim meet that I attended, people would come up to me to talk about Alex. He is so fun to watch diving. He gets so high on the board and the flips he does is amazing. And we don't even have a diving well. So to see that is pretty, pretty awesome. I can't wait to see what he does moving forward for both of them. Um, wrestling, their overall record was one and nine. The region record was zero and four. Their team makeup, they had 17 members of that, four of which were scholar athletes. Um, they're coached by John Easter and Dennis Clement. Um, their highlight was Divide Truman wrestling, the number one ranked girl in the state of PA, and almost won with a pin. They were super proud of that. Uh, the wrestling team had uh, quite a bit of injuries and health concerns, so they couldn't keep going through the season. Um, they're excited for their wrestling room next year. I think they're very um, thrilled about that. Those are our scholar athletes. And then just to give it a shout out to Devaya Truman, she competed at the Girls Wrestling Championships and she lost in the blood round. Um, for those who don't know that, what that means, it's the match right before you would medal. So she got all the way up to right before you would um, get a medal. So next year, I hope that she will actually get a medal next year. Cheerleading, I know they're here. Um, we have 32 members of the cheer team. Um, a highlight from their uh, season is during halftime at Harbor Creek boys varsity game the cheer teams from both schools perform the halftime routine together to loud cheers from the crowd so both Harbor Creek and Erie did that it was um, it was pretty neat coach Frankie give you props on that they also participated in the St. Patrick's Day parade they're coached by coach Bailey and coach Porter and their team makeup is there and 15 of them are scholar athletes um, they also do the little Royals camp to get the young ones and they actually participate in the parades with them Next year, they're going to do a small competition team, so we're moving forward with, with cheerleading. Uh, if you've been to one of the games where they've been present, they are definitely motivators. They build team support. They're the leaders of the team and the crowd. They're engaging, and they help create a sense of unity, and I'm proud of them every time they cheer. They do a great job. And those are our scholar athletes. And here's some pictures of those cheerleaders. <laughs> and there's them at one of the parades that they participated in. And then um, this year we did, um, it was our first one, April 2nd, um, we did our first coach reception. It was an opportunity for all the coaches from middle and high school. We met at uh, Strong Vincent Library, and we were able to thank them and be appreciative of everything that they do. They had an opportunity to meet one another, and we had a guest speaker, Mr. Bill Heath. Um, he's a local businessman. And he was a former coach in San Diego of a Nike 200 uh, school. So it was a great experience for everybody. And we're going to do those more in the future. And we're going to recognize marching band. OK. 
Okay, so director is Eric Nicholas. They had seven scholar athletes and they're listed there. So give them a round of applause. Deanna, you're on there again. And Mr. Nicholas, he um, put these two slides in about the band, um, where they rehearse. They rehearse at Erie High School. They're hoping to any student, seventh grade or above. Um, they perform at parades in Erie and in Pittsburgh. They're part of the LMBA competition circuit. Um, they have their rehearsal time on there. They talk about transportation through the activity bus. And their contact information is there for anybody who may be interested in joining the marching band. There you go, and I'm gonna let Mr. Easterling come up and do the middle school wrap up. Hello everyone, I'm Anthony Easterling, the middle school athletic director, and uh, we'll give our middle school wrap up. We have East Middle School. We had this year for our winter sports, we did boys basketball, volleyball, wrestling, and swimming. Um, our coaches are listed here. We have 14 scholar athletes throughout the uh, school. Each sport, we do a Royal Cup where we divide, where we have each of the three schools compete against each other um, to kind of remove the rivalries, but kind of create an atmosphere to where we can cheer each other on and kind of compete with each other. Um, so this year, East was, uh, they, they did a great job with the Royal Cup, meaning they beat Wilson and SV. It's kind of a tournament style, style uh, setting. And uh, for boys basketball, East won sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. For, uh, and with the team sports, we don't do it to where we're combined with wrestling and swimming, we're combined. But for volleyball, they also had a great showing as well. Um, and they have 14 scholar athletes. And these are their scholar athletes. <laughs> Strong Vincent Middle School, they again did sixth, seventh, and eighth grade basketball. They uh, had a great season in volleyball to where their JV team won the Royal Cup. The JV team had a great year this year. They um, did a great job in the different tournaments that we put them in. Uh, and again, the Royal Cup is where Strong Vincent will play East and Wilson in tournament style setting, and they ended up winning that. So, uh, and the wrestling and swimming, of course, they're combined with that. Here goes Strong Vincent's scholar athletes. Wilson Middle School. Wilson had a great year this year. They did boys basketball, of course. We had, uh, their, their coaches are listed here. Uh, for volleyball, their varsity team actually won the uh, Royal Cup. Uh, they did a great job. They showed great promise in uh, the, a lot of the tournaments that we put them in. We try and put them against different competition um, besides just playing against each other, you know, against us. So anytime they get to play against some other people, it's, you know, pretty exciting for them. And uh, like I say, in the tournaments, they did a great job. Uh, their varsity team made us really proud and looking forward to them continue, to continuing to improve. Um, I know I have wrestling and swimming on each of the slides. Our wrestling team did a great job this year. Our numbers are constantly improving. We had a phenomenal coach in RJ Hughes. He did a great job of uh, recruiting and keeping the kids engaged. I'm proud to say that a lot of the students, well, pretty much all of the students that started the sport, where I believe we had 18 to 20 students uh, start the sport, they all finished the, you know, finished the, the remainder of the season. So they all were engaged, they loved it, and um, you know, they did a great job. And with swimming, our numbers are growing. Coach James Swick did a great job this year as well. Um, and it's just really just trying to get each school um, you know, participating in the sport. This year we had practice at Strong Vincent. It seemed so as far as with numbers, it made it easier for the Strong Vincent students to get there. And then with the uh, help of the activity bus, um, the Wilson and the uh, East students also went to, um, you know, swimming or went to Strong Vincent to swim. So they, that, that program is growing and I'm excited to see what it looks like in the future. Um, they had 19 scholar athletes and they are listed here. <laughs> Eagles Nest, we encourage all of our charter schools to play. Um, for football and other sports, Ben Wiley and Eagles Nest, they always, you know, they, they're excited to, uh, to participate with us. These are the Eagles Nest Scholar Athletes. They played on the uh, Wilson basketball team. But again, we had uh, Eagles Nest students play on Strong Vincent and on East as well. They just weren't Scholar Athletes, so, you know, they didn't make the slide. These, are, these two, they did a great job on our Wilson uh, JV team. So we'll give them 
And lastly, I wanted to touch base on our Shamrock Club as we come to a close. Uh, the Shamrock Club is a uh, program that's designed for our elementary school students. This year we had it in the three schools. We had it in Fife for Burley, Dill, and Grover Cleveland. Um, we're very thankful for those schools for allowing us to kind of roll it out as a pilot program. You know, with any pilot program, there's different hiccups and different things that you have to kind of learn and go through. And uh, we're thankful for those schools for allowing us to do it. The Shamrock Club has been phenomenal. We've gotten great feedback from the students, great feedback from the parents, and great feedback from the administration and everyone that's involved. It's again designed to uh, have, we have college students coming to the elementary schools, teaching the kids uh, different sports that they otherwise may not be familiar with, um, as well as like these more traditional sports also. Um, currently we're doing uh, basketball and cross country. Moving forward, we'll do tumbling and I believe uh, life skill sports. So each week they learn different sports. And uh, it's Tuesday and Wednesday at those three schools. We keep them there for an hour and 15 minutes. They get lunch, they kind of talk to the college students, creating that mentorship uh, with them and kind of learning what their, their uh, college life is like. And it's been great for the, the uh, Mercyhurst students to teach our elementary kids and they, they've been having, a, you know, they really have uh, enjoyed it. Uh, moving forward, we're hopefully uh, looking to get the Shamrock Club into all 10 of the elementary schools to uh, really encourage all of the students to learn and um, you know, build that mentorship with the Mercier students and learn non-traditional and traditional sports. Um, and we believe this right here will, uh, will continue to build the middle school program as well as the, the high school program. Thank you. All right, and just to quickly to acknowledge our um, scholar athletes, tonight we're here to celebrate nearly 122. So each time we're here, that number keeps growing, which is awesome. Young men and women who make us EPS proud on the court, on the course, in the pool, and in the classroom. We are here to recognize their outstanding athletic and academic achievements. We also want to thank the many people who have supported these incredible students along the way and helped them reach their goals. Tonight, 58 of our high school students representing districts basketball, swimming, cheerleading, bowling, and wrestling teams will be awarded the Scholar Athlete Certificate and recognition of earning a grade point average of 3.0 or greater during the fall season. Another 64 student athletes from district middle schools representing volleyball, swimming, wrestling, and basketball will be awarded the Rising Roller Royal Athletic Scholar Certificate for the same achievement. Over the course of the winter season, the high school young men and women have proudly worn the E and middle schools represented their, their individual schools and served as shining examples of what it means to be scholar athletes. They are students first and athletes second. While excelling at their chosen sport, they remained focused on the bigger picture, their success in the classroom, and conducted themselves with the dignity and pride that we expect from all of our students. Involvement in sports and marching band are pathways to success for many of our students. It is through these activities that many of our students learn important lessons like teamwork, dedication, and of course, good sportsmanship. To our coaches, teachers, administrators, counselors, and staff members who support our students every day, thank you for your guidance and your commitment to ensuring these students are not just but great members of the community. To the parents and family members friends who have been there every step of the way, thank you for your invaluable support. Finally, to our scholar Thank you for doing the work for putting in the FEPS. We are so proud to celebrate you tonight. I'm going to ask the members of each team to stand when I call your name so you can be recognized. The marching band members. Our boys basketball team, the Region 7 champions. If you're here, please stand. We have it, but Members of our District 10 girls basketball team, please rise. Our accomplished swim team. Let us cheer for our cheerleaders. Our girls bowling team. And finally, members of our team in the audience, please stand to be recognized. <laughs> now I would like to recognize our Rising Royal Athletic Scholars. Members of East Middle School, if you're here, please stand. Strong Vincent Colonels, please stand to be recognized. Presidents and Eagles Nest Eagles. 
Thank you, everyone. This concludes our recognition. Athletes, please join us in the cafeteria to receive your award and congratulations. And thank you so much for your time. In my last uh, report tonight, we, we have our district wellness manager, uh, full-time wellness manager, Ms. Caitlin Falk. She's going to come up and give a presentation on the CDC, CDC whole school, whole community, whole child wellness model. Ms. Falk. Well, hello and happy Wellness Wednesday. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to come and present on some of our WISC updates. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Caitlin Falk, and I am your district wellness manager. Before that, I want to give some context. I'm saying WISC a lot. WISC stands for whole school community. And the WISC model is a framework for addressing school health within uh, our schools developed by the CDC. If you look at the graphic, it uses community support. 10 different dimensions in a child's life with the goal of making them feel healthy, safe, challenged, supported, and engaged. Now, this Setting. We are one of only two districts in the entire nation to receive this award. And we are the only district in Pennsylvania, which means we are the only district in the state to have a full-time district wellness manager. Now, because this is a federally funded grant, there are some standardized goals that we need to accomplish over the term of this grant, which is five years. First, implementing all aspects of a comprehensive school physical activity program. You can see those components in the graphic to implement the school wellness policy, to improve the nutrition environment during the school day, to improve nutrition and physical activity opportunities in out of school time hours, and to better support our students with chronic health conditions. Now, the goal of this grant is to create change. And we can only do this if we're honest about where we're starting. That's why baseline data is so crucial. I've spent the better part of this first year focusing on three different assessments that look at the policies and practices in place. The first is our healthy eating and physical activity, our HEPA, and this evaluates our after school programs. Our Smarter Lunchroom Scorecard, which evaluates cafeteria nutrition, quality, and environment. You can find more information about those two in your handouts. But today we're going to spend a bulk of our time on the School Health Index, or the SHE, which is a self-assessment self tool uh, developed by the CDC used to evaluate the policies and practices of school wellness. This is the most comprehensive model, and it parallels the WISC model. However, we pulled out seven different focus areas that most closely aligned with the goals outlined in the grant. So you can see these on the chart. Uh, six out of seven of these goals are designated as medium status, which uh, is labeled by the School Health Index. 40 to 80% is considered medium. Over 80% is considered high, and lower than 40% is considered low. So our employee wellness is the one category that is, in, is designated low. The other six are medium. There's a lot of great things going on, but today we're gonna to focus on some of the areas for growth. Let's dive a little bit deeper into these. Our first category is our out of school time. So it looks at policies and practices outside of the traditional school hours, before school, after school, on the weekends. Uh, there, in your handout, there are specific questions that you can look at to see the topics assessed, but they fall under the categories of access to healthy foods and beverages, opportunities for physical activity, and general health promotion outside of the school hours. So while we have several strengths, some areas for growth would be to intentionally bring in health and wellness into the outside of school hours through partnerships with the community for specific health activities, as well as staff training in the areas of healthy eating and physical activity to foster health and wellness outside of school hours. Our next category is chronic health conditions. Topics assessed here include staff training, policies, and health education in the realm of chronic health conditions. While we do have personnel that are trained to coordinate and manage care for students with chronic health conditions, uh, there is an area for growth to provide professional development for all staff, not just health staff, as well as education for students on how to manage chronic health conditions. Our next focus area is community engagement. Because we have the community schools initiative within our district, we do have a great fr framework for bringing community resources directly into the school. However, this specific topic area looked at how community engagement relates to health. 
So topics assessed included connecting families to health services, involving community in school decisioning, and bringing health resources directly into the school. I see a strength is that all schools partner with community-based health care providers, but there is opportunity to bring more community groups to the table for decision making, as well as partnering with community orgs to do health promotion activities directly in the school. The next focus area is nutrition. This has a very wide scope because it not only includes school meals, but all the food that we offer to our students. The Swibis stores, the athletic events, any treats that are given out by teachers. So questions assessed here included, uh, do all foods meet the USDA guidelines, the nutrition quality and environment, and how robust our nutrition education program is? Some areas for growth in include increasing the amount of time middle school and high school students have to eat lunch, collaborating with METS to bring nutrition education directly into the classroom and to athletic teams, to ensure that all, all food and beverages offered meet the guidelines currently offering students necessarily true about Swibis stores and fundraisers. And lastly, ensuring that all students select full reimbursable meals. Our next focus area is physical activity. We assess facilities, the professional development on activity in the classroom, and best practices for recess. Now you might be thinking, why is physical activity so important in an academic institution? But the neuroscience is clear, active students are better learners. When we're physically active, it improves our cognition, our attention, our mood, our behavior. And we know that mental health and behavior are some of the chief concerns. Physical activity can address those and have a positive impact. So some areas for growth would be to provide professional development for staff on how to include activity in the classroom, to encourage teachers to model healthy behaviors, them to be role models in terms of positive behavior for Swibis, and ensure that all schools are aware of current district policies, for example, prohibiting the withholding of, of recess as a punishment. Speaking of policies, that's our next focus area over. This topic assesses how informed families are, uh, what our current and how schools are represented at the district level. So some opportunities for growth. Well, first is that our wellness is current and it has yet to be implemented and enforced. We can re-engage our district wellness council at the table and then develop school level wellness teams so that schools are implementing that policy within their buildings. While we do have very, uh, a wide variety of avenues to get the information across to families, we could provide more regular and consistent communication specifically related to these health policies. And our last focus topic is employee wellness. If you remember, that was the one category that was ranked as low. So employee wellness here, or the topics assessed in employee wellness included wellness-based programming offered to staff and how accessible and communicated they are. So a strength was that numerous methods are used to promote these health services and programs, but I will say based on qualitative data, conversations, uh, staff surveys, I don't think that this is an effective method. Um, we do have several opportunities provided to us through our health insurance, but staff are not aware of them or do not find them accessible. So an easy fix would be to revisit our communication used to promote these services so staff know what is available to them for free. Those are the seven focus areas that we're going to be looking at over the next five years. But if you wanted to know a little bit more in depth about how each school ranked on the school health index, uh, you can see this graph here. In the school health index, there's two different versions, elementary and the middle school and high school. So this is our elementary rankings. All schools fell in that medium category between 40 and 80%. I just wanna note, there's a lot to celebrate. There's a lot of really great wellness opportunities happening currently. Um, so, but this is just our starting place. There's only room to grow from here. And then this is our middle school and high school. Again, all schools fell in that medium category. So what's next? We have, as I mentioned, this grant is five years. We're already three quarters of the way through the first year. So our next steps are to re-engage the District Wellness Council. Our first meeting will be May 22nd and we're going to meet quarterly. We do need school board representation. So if any of you are wellness minded and would like to serve on this council, please reach out to me. We'd love to have you. We are still collecting data, so I will be back in the future with some more 
uh, data and information. But one thing I really want to highlight here is the ASHA conference, American School Health Association. It is in coming up in October. It's right in our backyard in Pittsburgh. Uh, and the WIS grant does have funding to cover registration. So we'd love to get as many people there that can come to learn about how uh, school health can impact students. And lastly, come out and talk to me. I know that we, I mentioned those five standard learning, but there's flexibility and room for creativity. So if you have any ideas on how to positively influence our schools in the area of health and wellness, I'd love to hear about it. Um, I know this is just a highlight of the data. There's more data in your packets, but if you wanted to uh, meet one-on-one -on -one and discuss that further, or if you had any questions, again, please reach out to me. My information is in the packet. That's all from me. Do any of you have questions for me? Yes. Can you say that again? Sorry. Judging the health of the students. Um, but that's not collected in the school health index. Um, student uh, input will be included further on down the road. I don't think that we'll be having the medical information as a way to assess. Any other questions? All right, well, that's all from me. I hope you have a great rest of your night. And as, always, I, as I always like to say, be well, Erie. And that concludes my report tonight. Thank you, Mr. Polito, and thank you, uh, everyone who's presented today. Of course, we have a lot of educators and family members who have a lot to be proud about uh, for their students. Um, do I have a, a motion to approve the report of the superintendent? So moved. Moved by Ms. Gillespie. Second. Second by Mr. Harkins. Uh, any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, aye. say nay. Ayes have it, report passed. Next, we have reports of committees and liaisons. Uh, we only have uh, one report this evening. Uh, Ms. Amatangelo. Thank you, Dr. Brenneman. Uh, really brief, the board policy committee met at one o'clock on Tuesday, April 2nd, at the school administration building in conference room one at 148 West 21st Street. We do not have any recommendations this evening for the board. However, the next board policy committee meeting is scheduled for June 3rd. That will be in conference room one uh, of the school administration building at 148 West 21st Street, also scheduled for one o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Amatangelo. Uh, any questions? Uh, just for uh, those at home and those that are here in the audience today, just know that we do have a list of all the uh, liaisons and um, committees available on the school district website. Uh, and those meetings are public and you're free to attend or watch them on our page on YouTube as well. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the reports of the committees? So moved. Moved by Mr. Harkins. Second. Second by Mr. Nichols. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Reports are approved. Um, next, we have the portion of our agenda number five, public comment. So persons who are desiring to speak for five minutes must first uh, submit their request in writing to our secretary's office at least one week prior to the board meeting. All others may speak for three minutes. We did have two that signed up for today for five minutes but they will not be able to attend today, which means that we will only have, uh, we will have uh, anybody who wishes to speak at this moment uh, may do so. You have three minutes to speak. If you do wish to uh, speak there, uh, you can come down to the lectern right in front of us um, and uh, you'll have three minutes. There is a sign-in um, roster both on, in the lectern on the second shelf and is on a table uh, outside of the area who wishes to speak today. Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to, uh, so there is no uh, unfinished business, so that takes us right to seven new business. Uh, just for everyone's uh, awareness, if you're, if you're already, if, it's, if you're unaware as to how we conduct uh, our, our business at these meetings, is that we have our committee of the whole meeting that takes place a week prior, almost all the time, which so was last Wednesday, we had our committee of the whole meeting, and that's where we uh, dive in and, and discuss the items that will be on 
uh, this agenda for the regular meeting. This is our voting. This is where we vote on those items. A lot of those items, too, they may come through committee work uh, leading up as well. Um, this is what we consider agenda, which means that if there's uh, no concerns from members of the board, uh, we will uh, hold one vote for all the items uh, under item seven. Um, do we have, uh, do I have a motion to approve items under new business? You do, I make that motion. Uh, moved by Mr. Harkins, second by Ms. Amatangelo. Any discussion? I did want to just point out that, uh, you know, on today's agenda, we have a number of agreements with community partners who provide supportive and enrichment services in our schools that uh, provide a more robust experience uh, in, our, in our schools for our, um, for our students. And we also have the teacher student calendar for next year that's available as well. Uh, so do I have, or excuse me, so uh, uh, roll call, please. Mr. Harkins? Yes. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Amatangelo? Yes. Ms. Devlin? Yes. Ms. Gillespie? Yes. Ms. Graff? Yes. Dr. Brenneman? Yes. All those items pass. Next we have eight bills and payroll. I move we approve the bills for payment. Move, do we need to separate? Okay, so yes. we'll need to separate those items. So um, item 8.01, moved by Mr. Harkins. Second. Second by Ms. Devlin, any discussion? Yes, I'll abstain because I work for Montessori Regional Charter. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, roll call on item 8.01, please. Mr. Harkins? Yes. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Amatangelo? Yes. Ms. Devlin? Yes. Ms. Gillespie? Abstain. Ms. Graff? Yes. Dr. Brenneman? Yes. Next item, 8.02. Move we make the payroll payment. Yes. Ms. Amatangelo, any discussion? Roll call on that item, please. Mr. Harkins? Yes. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Amatangelo? Yes. Ms. Devlin? Yes. Ms. Gillespie? Yes. Ms. Graff? Yes. Dr. Brenneman? Yes. We have no items uh, under item nine award on bids. That takes us to uh, the last item on the agenda, which is any other board matter for discussion. Do we have any other matter to discuss? Mr. Nichols? We will have our next uh, policy committee and meeting in June, and I'm just hoping that at our meetings next month that the uh, administration's proposal on cell phone usage and such is going to be discussed because if we're gonna end up modifying the handbook at all, you know, we're running out of time for that. I know the administration's been working on that, but I'm hoping to be on that next month. Okay, thank you, Mr. Nichols. Who had an item to discuss? Okay, um, I do want to uh, thank Ms. Graff for attending virtually uh, today. Um, and uh, I also want to thank uh, all of the board members who have volunteered to serve on the instructional leadership teams or the ILTs for the school improvement plans uh, at uh, various schools around the district. I've heard positive feedback from uh, administrators and teachers as well. So please continue to do that. Um, and uh, my, I myself, I uh, was able to participate in the, the ILT meeting for uh, Lincoln Elementary, and then I'll be at uh, McKinley Elementary soon. Um, and so it's just great seeing um, uh, a variety of stakeholders, particularly you know, teachers uh, and, and parent representatives as well, uh, working on identifying the strengths and uh, ways of improving the instructional and academic outcomes for our students. So I just want to thank you all for who are participating in that as well. Um, and I do want to say uh, Eid Mubarak for those who celebrate today. And that is all I have. So I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved by Mr. Nichols. Second. Second by Ms. Gillespie. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We stand adjourned.